Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. Today's subject, grooving and parting. Uh, first thing that comes to my mind when I uh, talk about grooving is going to the box, grab myself a chunk of uh, high-speed steel, go to the grinder and make the proper tool. Time consuming uh, to get the proper width and everything. It's kind of a, you know, some, some work, but uh, any machinist will uh, be able to achieve something like that. It's not very complicated in the end though. Decent results. <coughs> Another way to uh, do some grooving and parting is the uh, some inserts. Some of these are very expensive. Some com some companies will uh, just try to brag about making the best insert on the planet and uh, the, uh, having the only features that uh, desirable features and uh, you know whatever they'll they'll get you fifteen to twenty five bucks for an insert. Uh, I find that prohibitive. Um, th these inserts, standard inserts, two millimeters wide. They're uh, uh, U.S. I would say f maybe six dollars, box of ten, not each, and uh, Canadian it cost me about seven dollars and something. Also, you will need, <coughs> sorry, you will need a um, grooving parting tool like this one here. This is not a big tool. I, I, I've tested the some of the tools that the, this this could come in a set, like a seven uh, seven um, tool set holders for about I don't know fifty bucks or thirty oh forty I would say forty bucks. And uh, pretty decent tools, but also you can get this tool with a box of 10 inserts uh, separate for $15. Reference just in the uh, description box. I'll give you the link to uh, get right uh, right to it. Also, you'll be needing uh, a grinding wheel. You can you can also like you know carbide can be ground on the these wheels here. They call them the green wheels. They're pretty costly and they wear. Uh, I would say they wear pretty fast. So uh, there's a better solution for this. You get these wheels, those cup wheels. This one is the 100 millimeters, four inches. Uh, I paid for this uh, 15 bucks Canadian or something around there within a few cents. US dollars will cost me, I, I would say around 12 bucks. So pretty decent deal. Uh, <coughs> you got, uh, you also got the smaller one for about half the price. This is a resin bond uh, with diamond, uh, diamond dust in there, diamond abrasive, uh, specially made for carbide. If you use this on steel and mostly uh, high speed steel, you will ruin the wheels. So do not use this on high speed steel. It, it won't last very long. If you use it with carbide, uh, you will be able to achieve uh, maybe thousands of grinds and uh, you know, depending upon the type of uh, you know, grinds you do and the size and whatever, but it will last a long time. For price, I'd say it's pretty good. Uh, sometimes you may need an adapter for uh, the bore here, depending upon on which uh, axles or shafts uh, your uh, grinding tools are maybe adapted large or whatever but for someone working metal it's something that can be achieved like uh, quite easily so that's uh, usually this is not a problem let's go now on my uh, Claxon uh, tool grinder uh, I got one exactly similar to this one uh, installed on the grinder similar in the way that uh, same uh, same brand same everything the only problem is I tried a few uh, few stunts on them it's got a few grooves but Still very usable for uh, my carbide inserts and uh, still very usable for the uh, demonstration we'll do right now. Okay, just to um, illustrate what I say when I'm meaning uh, doing this by hand, I'm not going to start the grinder because the wheel is not properly mounted, so I don't want it to fly in my face. Make sure your gap, you know, always make sure your gap is less than an eighth of an inch there. That's very important on any grinder. Uh, you can just get the tool here, hold it by hand to the proper place and just by slight movement uh, don't uh, don't hold the uh, insert too long on the uh, wheel just by small uh, small increments you'll be able to achieve the same uh, same quality of work that I did on the uh, Clarkson grinder and uh, it'll maybe uh, require a little bit more care but it's like I say feasible by hand without too much problem this is the setup I'll be using for the uh, grinding of this the fact of having the tool grinder it will produce a better grind, a more stable grind, but it can also be done by hand. I've done some and uh, with very good results also. This is the uh, little grinding wheel, the little uh, diamond bond uh, resin grinding wheel. One note of advice with those wheels, do not grind H, uh, high, high speed steel or any steel like that. It's not meant for that. It's meant for uh, carbide or very hard materials. This is the uh, tool to use for that. So the grinding table here, the motion is controlled with this handle, this lever there. I can control the uh, back and forth, I mean this direction or this direction with this, uh, s you know, lead screw there. So general general setting up on the uh, low angle, pre precision angle block there. That's all I have with the T-slot there. 
which is ho held with uh, a uh, can twist clamp. You can use just anything to hold it, but uh, the uh, I'm using the tool holder itself. Okay, we're now we're now ready to uh, install the insert in there. Since I want to get the insert now, or it's a two millimeter insert, and the holder there is meant for a two millimeter insert, so you're going to be having to bring it a little bit forward so it clears the holders. Uh, you know the holders <laughs> sensitive parts. Then you tighten the screw on top to make sure that the uh, insert will keep its place. It's not meant for, uh, you know, not sitting the holder in the bottom of the uh, slot there is not meant for heavy removal or anything like uh, heavy stuff. So make sure that this very solid. Now that it is, we'll start the grinder. With this top view, we see that uh, we're almost there. One thing I did, I exaggerate with this ruler there. I gave it a little uh, angle this di this direction in a way to uh, make a little recess behind the uh, head of the cutter. This will help into uh, not the sides of the uh, cutters rubbing. This side here, which I'm going to be doing only one side, this one side here will be uh, is already like arranged for uh, you know what a little slight uh, relief angle. Got touched down. This tool has been ground for a special operation, so I'll be giving enough clearance on the front there, so uh, that will do the uh, depth of the groove to the appropriate. Two thousandths at a time. You don't really want to. Like they say, the proof's in the pudding. So let's try to see what it does. I'll just touch off. This is Coro steel. Uh, what I'm intending to do is about 40, 50 thousands per grooves. Let's try a little bit of a lubricant. thousands let's make another one fifty thousands like with any uh, parting or grooving you uh, get it in slowly then you uh, firmly though okay we'll do sixty thousands Let's go for 60, 70 thousands now. Thirty-five, fifty, sixty, seventy thousands. Seems to be doing great. I think I like this. Uh, the insert seems to be doing good. Grooves are nice. Let's try the original insert in there, just to see if, uh, you know, the tool's meant for that, after all. Let's see how this uh, performs. This is the original 2mm insert, untouched. It's a brand new insert. We're uh, cutting this billet there. This, this billet is about 27 millimeters diameter, but a little bit over an inch. Let's see how it does, 650 mm, RPMs. Yeah. I'm going to uh, try to get the groove and we'll start from that groove. So far so good. 
I'm going uh, constant uh, feeding by hand. Normally it's always better to use lubricant. So uh, back to feed, it's going pretty good and fed. Almost there. We're just about there, this tiny hair in the middle. That's it. I'm a little bit low in anyway. Seems to be doing a decent cut on the sides. Not too bad. Let's try it again. Lubricating the cut will help on the, uh, on the sides to uh, lubricate the chips from coming out of the slot. Constant feed. But you gotta have a positive feed too also. Like, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, there you go, this is, uh, this should be uh, giving you an idea of how much uh, how much feed I do with this. Like I say, positive. No hesitation once I'm starting to bite. If you feel the chips rolling off and trying to jam, you just back off a little bit and uh, restart. There we go, we're almost in the middle of it. It's gonna fall, fall in. And this time the uh, adjustment was much better to center. This this insert does, uh, does to my uh, appreciation, a very good job also.